Primmy's just finishing packing, I thought I'd say goodbye. Well, darling, I suppose I've loused things up. I just want you to know I'm really going to try to do better. Oh, Mother, don't repress yourself too much. I don't want you to have a stroke or anything. Pain, I'm sorry if you think I get in your life too much. It's a sickness I caught when you were born. You know, you're the first thing that ever intimidated me. I didn't know anything about babies, certainly not about boys. And I still remember everybody watching through that hospital nursery window while I stood there with your little sweater and booties in my hands praying, dear God, please let me get these shoes on right or they'll never let me take him home with me. <laughs> now you're grown. And my head never touches the pillow at night then I don't say, thank you, God, for giving me this most wonderful son. Mom, wait up. I didn't mean to upset you by what I said. I was just being honest. You didn't upset me. I was just thinking. About what? Oh, maybe I did something right for a change. What do you mean? Sending you to live with Grams. Sending isn't the way I'd put it. Fair enough, Jen. But I don't think you realize how lucky you are. I've been searching in vain for friends like that all my life. Well, I'm glad that it makes you feel better, but as good a friend as they are, they're not family. No, you're right, Jen. This past year has been anything but easy for me. I stumbled and picked myself up and stumbled and picked myself up over and over and over with no safety net. I know I should have been there for you. I should have written or called. So why didn't you? I wish I could tell you that for a thousand different reasons. I kept wanting to. You have no idea how much that hurts. I know. What did I do that was so bad? What was so wrong? Nothing, Jen. Nothing was so wrong. Then what? Let me try and explain this. Maybe you hear what I'm doing for Jamie. What? At exactly 737, I'm yeah. going to take her up to the Marriott Marquis, yeah. and we're going to look out the window, and she's going to see this huge, a gigantic Mother's Day greeting that I wrote up on the uh, on the Times Square screen. Wow, you are really huh? pulling out all the stops, and I should know because I'm still using the bath powder you gave me last year. <laughs> Ma. <laughs> You know, don't you? There's a big surprise for you, too. Listen, me? Yeah. I don't need a fuss. I've had I'm ashamed to tell you how many Mother's Days. <laughs> oh, what kind of surprise? What's that? What kind of surprise? A present. A big, a, a very thoughtful present. Very, and a card. A card and a present together with a card. One second. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a big problem. I forgot to get mom a present. Oh, I was so busy with the Jamie stuff, I totally slipped my mind. Did you did you get her anything? Yeah. Okay, but... make it from both of us. No. Oh, well, come I on, Bo, why I... not? No, because it's not the kind of oh, thing. Oh, Debbie, could... please, please. Oh, well, Debbie, please what? <gasps> okay, uh, Ma, you remember last week when I took you to see the Scarlet Pimpernel? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was from Paul, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ma. It's just in my myopia, I forgot. Fine. In my myopia, I'm saying. Oh, please, it's nothing. Really? Nothing. She says it's nothing, but in fact... It's something. Yes. <laughs> now, hold the calendar a little higher. Point to the date. What's the matter with this damn thing? Oh, God. Are you OK? Hey, how are you, uh, Jamie Buckman? Uh, no, but... Oh, you uh, know what? I don't care who you are. Just sign here. Okay, here you go. Klondike Pete. Yeah, well, you don't care who I am, there you go. 
More flowers for you. Oh, for Mark and Fred. Oh, that's sweet. Isn't that nice? I put this with the other 743,000 flowers. Ah, how nice. Uh, Ma. I'm saying, how nice. <laughs> OK, I think we should open some presents. Yeah, that is a good idea. idea, opening presents. Oh. Oh, what a lovely looking rocking chair. Mm, yeah. uh -huh. Good idea. We'll start with something big. No, Deb, don't start there. You know, I think we maybe there's something here for you, Deb. Oh, from Ira. With love to my favorite mother, Jamie. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, my God. <laughs> You're just saying that. <laughs> but you could say it some more. <laughs> All right. Mother, you look beautiful. Oh, who am I trying to kid? I'm acting like an old fool. Don't ever say that. I don't have to say it, Angela. You said it for me. Oh, for crying out loud, Mother. You've never listened to me before. Why are you going to start now? <laughs> well, you've always been a pretty smart cookie. No, it's because I take after you. Well, Miss Scarlet, there's a date. I... I can't go through with this. You tell him something. What should I say? I don't know. I'll think about that tomorrow. <laughs> she smiled at me. Either that or she's pooping. Maybe both. Maybe she just really enjoys... I'm pregnant. Pooping. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I haven't felt well since we landed, and I bought a pregnancy test in the drugstore in the lobby, and we're going to have a baby. Well, what do we do with this one? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm having an anxiety attack. Uh, uh, calm down. Are, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I mean, look. What means pregnant? The monkey or the dragon? <laughs> That's just decorative. Look, it came up blue. That means I'm pregnant. It must have happened in the apartment that night. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought the doctor said you couldn't get pregnant. No, she said we probably couldn't. It happens all the time. When couples don't think they can get pregnant, they stop trying, and then they adopt a baby, and... Oh, God. Carrie, you have to calm down. I can't calm down, Doug. Yesterday, I had no husband and no baby, and today, I have a husband and two babies, and I'm in China. That's a lot of change for one day. But, Mama... <laughs> Mama, you think, after staying here for 16 years, I'd know my own way home by now? Well, just because you know a way doesn't mean it's the best way. <laughs> Hello, Mother Hightower. Well, if it isn't Cedric the dog killer. <laughs> oh, Mama, come on, you be staying in my room. Oh, no, Cookie. You work hard and you need to sleep in your own bed. I will sleep in his room. Cedric, change your sheets and take down those filthy pictures from the walls. <laughs> Mama, I don't think it's right for you to just come in here and take Cedric's room. Oh, I wouldn't mind sleeping out on the couch if my dog was still alive. I'd just go take down Apollonia, Cookie. Ooh, the place looks nice, son. But I don't see the plastic slip covers I sent you. Oh, well, sorry about the slip covers, Mama, but they kept sticking to my leather pants. Oh, you and those leather pants, you're just like your father. Oh, Lord, here we go. But why couldn't your brother marry a black woman? And why couldn't your brother marry a black woman? <laughs> Linda's a nice girl, but she still don't know how to do those kids' hair. Mama, can we talk about something else? All right. When are you going to settle down and give me some grandbabies? You know, since we're talking about Linda... <laughs> now, Mama... I know Linda can't put a straight part in them kids' hair to save her life, but her greens, oh, her greens done come a long way. Hey, yo, what are you doing here? We don't want to intrude. Uh-oh, Julia. Bad timing. I think that we may have interrupted a crucial moment in her soap opera. So how are Erica and Tempest and Brandy and Kate? Martin, just on. Oh, look who's here. Oh, hi, Miss Olivia. 
How are you doing? <laughs> She's fine. She was just about to have her apple juice. Oh, could I give it to her? Oh, yeah, thanks. It's in the fridge. Okay, come on, baby. Actually, Charlene, to tell you the truth, Julie and I came over here to see if we could talk into coming back to work. Oh, my Joe, no, no, please don't do this to me. Well, staying at home may not be working out exactly like I planned, but I still want to do it. What's the problem? Well, it just seems like ever since I decided to stay home, all the other women in the neighborhood who do go off to jobs, you know, are kind of using me. You know, they say, well, Charlene, since you're going to be home anyway, could you just... You know, and then they fill in the blank. Everything from having their UPS stuff delivered here to looking in on their sick gerbil. <laughs> I mean, I have stuff to do, too. I have stress. Stress, yes, I know. Deciding between Phil and Oprah's hellish. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Mary Jo, I know you don't mean to, but you hurt my feelings with those remarks. Oh, come on, Charlene. I was just joking around. Have you lost your sense of humor since you haven't been working? Mary Jo, I am working. Oh, I know that. You know what I mean. Well, how'd you like it if I joke around with you like that? Like what? Well, like if I said, well, if you hadn't been working, maybe Quint wouldn't be in the trouble he's in. Mary Jo, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to say that. No, uh, obviously it's something that you've wanted to say for a long time. No, it's not. Time. I didn't mean No, that. I'm really glad you got it out. I mean, obviously. My kids aren't going to take children of the year this year, and, you know, I probably am to blame. You know, I don't have a rich husband. I don't have a husband at all. I don't have a choice. My work is not a hobby that I can drop or pick up whenever the impulse strikes. Oh, and now I'm just a rich old frump. Is that it? Is that your point? What is going on in here? You're leaving. That's what's going on. It's fine with me. I have to earn a living. Harry Joe. There. Doesn't that ginger ale make everything feel better? No. I ruined everything. No, you didn't, sweetheart. Everything's gonna be fine, I promise. Mom, I threw up on the bride. <laughs> well, honey, in some countries, that's a tradition. <laughs> Lawson, I need your help with something. Yeah, sure. What's going on? Is that your speech? No. Um, it's actually a letter written to me from my mom. She wrote it before she died, and Bessie's been saving it ever since. Wow. Um, have you opened it yet? I tried, and... Uh, Every time I go to open it. I remember what she was like at the end. You know, so still and um, so much pain and suffering. I just kind of freeze up. But that being said, um, I still have to know, so. I was wondering if you would read it for me. I'd be honored. Thank you. My darling Joey. I know if you're reading these words, it means you've graduated from high school. Congratulations, sweetheart. If you didn't have a lot growing up, you'll even have been shortchanged one mother. Still, I want you to be proud of your family. If our strife has caused you pain, remember it also makes you strong. Bessie is strong, and I'm sure she's taking good care of you. Of all the things my illness has robbed me of, I count the greatest of them watching you grow up. You're barely 13 now, still a young girl. And so I'm left to imagine the woman you've become. Strikingly beautiful, I'm sure, and equally unaware of it. Quick-witted and strong-willed. Possessing the deep, soulful eyes of an artist and shy smile regularly betrays the tough facade you do your best to keep up. If any of this sounds remarkably on the nose, it's because it's the girl you always were, Joey. 
and it's the woman you'll always be. Whatever you decide to do with your life, I know your future will be luminous. Wherever you decide to go when you leave, remember your days in Cape Side fondly. And keep close those who shared your childhood. They will always love you in a way no one else can. And they will always be with you. Just as I love you. And will always be with you. Love, Mom. <laughs>